Um, I, I think, I mean, speaking for myself, in my teenage years, um, I would hear um, Jesus talked about, hear the cross talked about, and then there'd be some sort of appeal at the end. And I was a serial go to the fronter at these meetings. So I would go to the front, I'd yeah, give my life, go to the front again, like maybe six months later, and then again, and then again, six months later, and it never stuck. And I think a lot of that was because I was basically told, look at the suffering of Christ. Look how much he suffered. Look how much he suffered. Look how much he suffered. Now you go and do the same. You know, so there's almost a sense of, you know, you almost felt guilty coming away from it. Rico tells a great story. I think it's in the Billy Connolly book. You remember the, the story mm -hmm. where he's at, he's at school and he used to go in and there was this huge kind of crucifix with, with Jesus on it. Jesus and, is dead and it's your fault. Yeah. yeah. So he was told as a kid, Jesus is dead and it's your fault, right? Now, okay, in a sense, there's a sense in which that's true. My sin, ultimately, that's why Christ came and died. But what I wasn't seeing in those, those presentations of the cross was... Christ's incredible love for me and the reason why he died. It's not just to deal with my sin. The reason he deals with my sin is in order that I can know God, in order that I can be reconciled to God. And that's my joy. He's my joy. He's my happiness. And so ultimately, the reason that Jesus died, I think it, it really sells the cross short when you just say, well, he died in order to pay for your sin. That's wonderfully true, gloriously true. But he did that in order that I can be reconciled to God, which is the greatest happiness that any human being can possibly know. There's, um, I was at a weekend uh, with my church family over the last, um, was it five or six days ago? I made this fantastic uh, Indian preacher there, a um, guy named Isaac Shaw. And he said this great line. It, I'm assuming it's his because he didn't reference it as being anyone else's. But he said, there are some people who see God as useful they're missing out until they see him as beautiful. I said that. Did you say, is that your line? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it is now, it is, no, Rico is now. Um, but the thing is with, with that is that there are certain presentations from a kind of, um, from a Bible believing, you know, sort of faithful, trying to be helpful, which, which just present Jesus as, you know, he's the answer to the problem, you know, and now you've got the answer to the problem, okay, you can move on. It's like sort of, here's some eternal insurance. You know, okay, if you've got that Jesus thing, you pray the prayer and you're okay, you're now gonna commit yourself to living a life of discipleship, great. But actually, we want people to just marvel at, at the glory and the beauty and the majesty, the splendor of God. And we see that, we see that in the face of Jesus. And so we kind of, the idea behind the, the resource is to just sort of hold him up like a jewel and just say, can you see how this shines? Like, look at every facet, look as the light. Like, and, and compare this with whatever, you know, little pebble you found on this, you know. It's like, there's no comparison between this God and the others. Can I say something English and arrogant? It's time I did, we lost the empire, so it's always important the English do this. But, you know, you said there's nothing new under the sun. Actually, Santino, in Britain, this is pretty new. I think it really had been buried or lost a long time. I think that um, this sense of uh, the, the way idolatry is blinding and particularly good things, you know, education, you know, we, we have these churches that are set up around these little idols and you, dare you criticize them and suddenly this is unpicking the, the apathy that leads from that. Uh, and secondly, I think what is new is this, this sense of uh, to enjoy God and, and, and reflect him. To the, I think a lot of, you know, I've had people on the table, again, leaders, not just those attending, suddenly go, okay, so my life is to be a mirror. I'm, I'm, I'm not the center. He's the center. But as, as I do whatever I do, I, I reflect his goodness. I've been working hard in evangelism in, in England for 25 years. And I tell you, it's pretty buried that. So again, not new under the sun, yes, but pre, I, I think... You know, here's my arrogant comment. I think we're uncovering some very fresh things for people because the leaders are going, oh, as well as the participants, in a way that when we went through Mark's gospel, it, it was staggering to look at Jesus, but the leaders had sort of delved there before. This stuff is like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I, I really, you know, that's why I think we're passionate about it. I really think there are things that, again, Barry's 
worked really hard, you know, digging this up and 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 working through it. But I think there are things, there are very fresh things prophetically we're saying to the church with this. 